Hi guys, so today I wanted to do a video explaining how exams work when you're studying with the Open University. In case you don't know, the course that I'm doing is the Bachelor of Science Honors in Mathematics and Physics. So that's the experience that I can share. I'm sure there will be different things for some other courses, but for the most part, this is how it works. This year I took two courses, S111, which didn't have a final exam, you just had like a final tutor marked assignment, and then I have MST124, which is the maths module that did have an exam. So for the S111 final paper, it counts as a lot more percentage of your mark for the course, and it is marked by your tutor, but then sent to someone else to check their marks, so it's not biased. I experienced bias in the university that I went to in Spain with professors, and both negatively and positively, but it's just something that I'm not okay with, so I'm really happy that they do this at the Open University and they check with different people to see if the marks are correctly put in your paper. Now for my other course, MST 124, I did have an exam. So you get your exam date way in advance. So months in advance, I knew that I had that exam on that date. So for me that I work full time, it was really good to know in advance because I can prepare myself and I can tell other people that that day I'm not going to be at work for a few hours. You have loads of resources online on how to prepare for your exam, but it definitely varies from one to another. For my one, you were allowed to take a little handbook that you have and that was allowed to be annotated. So it was really helpful because you can just put examples and things like that on your exam, on your handbook, sorry, and then take that to your exam and just help you do the exam, I guess. But that didn't prove to be that helpful and I'll tell you why in a second. You definitely should read all the different assessment handbooks on there because it has a lot of rules on what you can take and you cannot take and things like that. So for me living in London I had my exam at a conference center I think it is near Euston Station and you get there in the morning. The exam was from 10 to 1 so it is 3 hours long and I got there at like 9.15. They open the doors at 9.30 so you don't need to get that long in advance because they're not going to let you in. So once you're in, you have all your bags and all your things and you leave those in a room that's going to be locked. They say and monitored, I don't know because you're not there. So I didn't take my phone with me just because I didn't want to risk my phone getting stolen because I don't have money to buy a new one. So I didn't take my phone in but a lot of people did. You just leave it there with the rest of your things and you take your pencils, pens, calculator, handbook if you're allowed one and like a water bottle and food if you want and you take that with you and you wait in a waiting room for a few minutes. From there they take you to the examination room and there's like a little schedule map thing on the wall that you can check to see where you're sitting because obviously it's not just your module doing the exam that day, it's loads of different modules, different students that are doing different courses. So they just do it per module and then in alphabetical order. I think there were like 15, 16 rows, it was like 200. 300 people, I think, in the room. I found my one really fast because it tells you the, the first, um, the last name of the first person, the last name of the last. So I just found mine and it was very easy, but it should be very straightforward. Once you get there, you have a little paper on the desk. Your exam is already there and then a little paper with your name. Just check that that's your name, that that's where you're supposed to be and you just sit there and do the exam. Now my exam had 42 questions, it was really long and I should have tried to do a mock-up before at home but I didn't have time, I didn't plan as well as I wanted to but if you have time please do that and try to do like a mock-up of the exam with the one that they provide. I did look at it but I didn't do it with the time that I should be having and please do that because for the 42 questions in the first two hours I was like on the 22nd question and the last part is the hardest part if you feel confident enough please do the last part first because it's the most complicated one and for me I just had to guess a few of the questions because I didn't have enough time to do them so that's one of the things it is a very long exam and here's what I was saying that annotations are not that helpful just because you have to go and find them and look at them and then do the question on your paper and that takes a lot of the time and you do have just a couple minutes per question so it's not really that helpful to have long annotations just because you're not gonna have enough time to read through them and then 
try to transfer them to the question that you're doing, if that makes any sense. You are allowed to leave early if you finish early, and a lot of people did. Um, I don't think they were from my module because they were sitting far away, so... Yeah, if you finish MST124 in less than 3 hours, please let me know because I'm gonna be very impressed. I then went online on the Facebook group that we have and loads of people struggle with the same things that I did, so that made me feel a bit better knowing that I wasn't the only one struggling with time and struggling with some of the last questions. Also, just saying the questions on that paper are a bit more tricky than the ones that you've done previously on the TMAs and things like that. So they do make it a bit more difficult and a bit more um, tricky, which is not very helpful, but that's how they do it. So when you finish your exam, if you are done early, I don't know what happens because that didn't happen to me, but you just wait for everyone to finish they get all the papers and then once all the papers are collected you can leave the room, go back to the room where you had your stuff and then you pick it up and you leave. And that's it. For this one I think we're getting the results on the third week of July so it's a bit of a month and a bit that you're gonna be waiting for your results. Overall I think it was very well organized. I do think they have a good method in place and it was very easy to find everything. I didn't stress as much with finding my place and finding all the things that I needed to do. And there are people around invigilators that you can ask if you have any questions and they do let you know what to do. So I was a bit stressed with that. I didn't know if I was going to find the place. I didn't know if I was going to find my seat and things like that. But it was very easy. Yeah, time flew by so the exam goes by really fast. So that was my experience with my first exam at the Open University. Let me know if you've done any and if you have any tips for me next time or any comments that you want to let me know. Just go to the comments below and leave them there. So I really hope you guys liked this video and it was helpful to some of you maybe thinking about studying with the Open University or having exams soon. Let me know if it was helpful as well because I would love to know that. But I will see you guys later with another video. Bye!